Today, like I said in the oil change video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace your old coolant um, or flush your coolant, do a coolant change, whatever you want to call it, on an R6. This is 2014. Um, just in my case, I'm going to be replacing it with distilled water and water wetter. Supposedly this helps it run a good bit cooler, so I'm actually going to test that out. Um, you want distilled water because with the uh, aluminum, some shit, whatever, your aluminum engine crap. If you put normal water, um, some of the stuff in there is bad for your, it corrodes everything. Um, so distilled water, make sure you get distilled, not drinking water, even though it says purified, it still has shit added in it that's not exactly, you don't want that in your bike. So in my case with the water wetter, I'm going to go ahead and start the bike up and let it warm up. And I'm going to just let it run until it gets as high as it'll get as far as temperature wise just sitting here. So I'm trying to see the difference. So. I'm going to start it up, let it warm up to, I mean, for a good while just to see how hot it will get. Before, with the stock coolant, which is glycol based, um, I'm sure it's 50 50 or something like that. It's like half water, half antifreeze. Um, down here in Louisiana, especially with my bike being locked inside um, year round, we don't have to worry about the freezing. So I don't necessarily need glycol to stop the water from freezing. So we'll go ahead and start it up, let it warm up, and we'll be back. All right, so we're back with the stock coolant. Obviously, it gets all the way up until the fans kick on. Um, it took maybe eight to 10 minutes just sitting here idling for it to get up to 214, um, which is after that, the fans kick on and they kind of bring it, keep it around that area. So, uh, now I'm going to go ahead and start taking off some of the crap that I need to take off. Some of the fairings to get to the, uh, got to get to the radiator cap and the coolant reservoir. Okay, so here's where we're at. Got the left fairing off. You can see the reservoir here. Uh, later on we'll get to that. For now, you're gonna want to pull this. Um, I think. Let me see. Yeah. I don't remember which one is the drain, but I think it's this bottom um, bolt right here. It's your drain bolt. I'm not. I don't know. I'm gonna pull it, and hopefully it'll drain. <laughs> um, and then I think you want to take one of the clamps off the hose clamps and let that drain too and it'll drain the fluid more I don't know we're gonna drain it so let me like I said I took the fairings off um clean them up I'm gonna clean them before I put them back on just because it's easier to clean them when they're off all right <clears throat> so what I went ahead and did was pull this which is the drain plug for the coolant Oh, it's an eight millimeter. Just pull that out. You take the reservoir, just like so, and it has these two 10 millimeter bolts. Yep, that sucks. So you pull those out. I had to pull off pretty much all the fairings on this side. Pull those out, and you can take the cap off of the uh, reservoir and then just dump it out so we got our coolant old coolant I'm gonna put the overflow reservoir back on and then we'll run some water through it all right so with your drain plug out right here I'm just still kind of hoping that that's the drain plug <laughs> oh like so you want this one out, it has a little copper washer on it. 
You take that out, leave it out, drain your fluid, and then drain the reservoir that I just showed you. Then you're going to take distilled water. It has to be distilled because your aluminum parts in the engine. And you're going to pour it right in here where the radiator cap is. And I'm going to flush a little through so hopefully it will come out. <laughs> hopefully it will come out the drain. There we go. You can clean your, see how it's blue again? So make sure you tilt it upright to get some of that old, to get all of that old blue rock off shit out of there. So it's not that critical for me because um, my coolant isn't bad anyway. I'm just replacing it because I, I want to try water water. So it's not that critical that I flush it. But if you're changing your coolant, you probably want to flush it out pretty good. Okay. So that's one gallon. I'm, I'm holding it upright just to help it flush better. Hold the bike upright. Or if you have it on a stand, that's great. Mine hasn't come in yet. Oh, it's just coming out blue again. So just make sure you flush it good with distilled water. So I'm going to let that finish draining and then I'm going to plug everything back up and try out the water wetter. Alright, <clears throat> so I kind of flushed a little through there. The next thing you're going to do, this is a hose clamp. You're going to move it back on the hose to get it out the way and then you got to pull this hose backward or actually toward the front of the bike pull it and let that drain um, in the manual it says you can use uh, tap water to flush the thing wow and there's like dirt it's corrupt, like sand it's like sand I don't know if you can see that inside this hose so that can be good um, and then I'm going to pour just a little bit more water through with that hose off So we flushed it, popped the hose, pulled the bolt, and moved this old coolant out the way. Um, with the old coolant, especially if you have glycol, make sure you dispose of it however you're supposed to dispose of it. Um, this stuff is really bad for animals. And for some reason, dogs like to drink this stuff. Um, I know a few people who have had these like backyard mechanic fuckers that are their neighbors and they... The guys left the shit out, left some antifreeze, which is what I just took out of the bike. They leave that out, and your neighbor's dog goes and drinks the shit and fucking dies. Um, it's a pretty shitty thing to do to somebody's pet, man. So make sure you get rid of that stuff. Um, I'm going to pour it back into gallons and bring it wherever I got to bring it. I'm bring it to a, probably a local mechanic shop. Well, I'm going to at least bring it there and ask them. It says to torque this to about uh, 7 point something foot pounds. Just tighten it up, but be careful because it's in aluminum. You don't want to strip it. Oh, put your hose back after you've flushed it. Put your hose back. Yeah. And then put the clamp back where it goes. I'm just using a pair of pliers to squeeze it. So you put it back, make sure it's grabbed back onto the hose where the hose fits in, onto this piece. So you got your hose back, you got your bolt tightened. Um, I'm going to kind of show 
I know I kind of didn't show very good how to take the um, reservoir off and the fairings off. The fairings are pretty simple. You got these little pop, these little rivet things that you pop, you push them in and then they pull out. You got to take all of them out and then you have a few um, bolts like this that with a four millimeter Allen key to take it off. Um, the reservoir, you loosen these two bolts right here and then the reservoir will pop off and then all you got to do is pry the rubber cap off and then dump the thing out. It's not that complicated. I've already done that. So now I'm going to tighten these bolts and then we'll fill it back up. All right, so there's four quarts in a gallon. Four quarts in a gallon and this says three to four caps per quart. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go four caps, uh-uh, 12 cap fools per gallon of this. So, oh yeah, spill it everywhere, that'll work. So, you want 12 capfuls of this per gallon of distilled water. Make sure that's nice and mixed. And now you have your new. Now you have. Now you have your water wetter and um, whatever distilled water mixed fill the radiator first which is here um, let me see if I can make a quick funnel right so I went ahead and got a funnel now we're gonna just pour the stuff that you mixed and fill the radiator So the radiator's full. Oh, I'm gonna crack the drain plug just to kind of make sure there's no air in mine. I don't know if you have to, but I'm gonna crack the drain plug. Okay. So I cracked the drain plug and there's pink water water and water coming out. So it should be a pretty good indicator that <clears throat> there's no air bubbles anywhere in the system, hopefully. Oh, stand it up. Okay, and it, it looks like a little bit of it. It had an air pocket, so I'm gonna stand it upright and fill it. Make sure it's full. And it was definitely full. <laughs> All right. So you fill the radiator. I'm gonna put the radiator cap back on. Funnel out, radiator cap back on. Bam. Now I'm gonna put my funnel in the reservoir. Just pull this cap off and move the hose out the way. So you guys can see this crap. Oh, my GoPro is plugged in and charging, that's so why I can't can't get the greatest angle. Oh. Um, fill the reservoir. You want it between the full and low line, obviously. So let's do that. Put your little hose back. Cap. Put your cap, your rubber cap back on the reservoir. And that's it. The coolant change is done. Um, I replaced mine with water wetter. You can choose whatever you want. I know they have engine ice. A lot of people use that. I don't know. Um, so, 
still have a shit ton of this. Um, I'm going to pour it in the old coolant and get rid of it because I don't want to have it sitting around. I put back on all my fairings after I changed the coolant to water wetter. And then the bike was completely cool, just like it was when I first started it. And as a comparison, right now it's been idling for eight, nine minutes, just like I did before, and it's only at 180 degrees. So, I mean, if that translates into cooler bike while riding in traffic, that'll be freaking amazing. So, I just got back after changing my changing my coolant to water wetter. Um, went right around for a few hours um, in the city to kind of see how if the water wetter did anything. Um, I do think it's cooler riding around slightly. Uh, I noticed my fans don't kick on as much as before whenever I had the stock and then the, the coolant that came with the bike which was probably like 50-50 antifreeze and water. Oh. And I swapped it out for the distilled water and water wetter to see if it would actually make it run cooler. And I went ride, and I think it does, probably between 8 to 10 degrees cooler um, when you're actually stop and go, like in traffic or neighborhoods or whatever. So I do notice the fans kick on slightly less. Um, this is going to be the end of this video. And I'm just filming this helmet and every, all my gear for my next video, which is going to be a review and kind of an overview of all the gear that I got whenever I first started really riding. So, check out the next video if you want to see this gear review. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, comment on them. If you don't like them, comment on them. If you like all of them, subscribe. There will be more coming. Thanks.